Hey everyone, it's Sarah and I am super casual right now. It's Saturday. It's super yucky outside. It's raining. We have, we've got, like, we're getting the, um, kind of, we're on the outskirts of the hurricane that's coming through right now that I know is just, like, killing Louisiana and some other states right now. So if you're in one of the states that the hurricane is hitting right now, I, my thoughts are and prayers are with you. I hope you are all doing well. Um, Today I am going to start my series of collection videos. Uh, it's probably going to take four or five videos for me to get through all of my perfumes, but we are going to get down and dirty. I'm going to get on the floor and I'm going to go through every single perfume I have, uh, full bottle of perfume that I have. Uh, one by one. I'm also, I'm going to do a kind of declutter at the same time. So anything that I know I'm going to get rid of, I'll just let you know and I will let you know why. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start out by giving you kind of a little tour and what I've got going on here so you can see that I'm kind of drowning in perfume right now. My husband said to me the other day, he was like, babe, you are like busting at the seams and it's because we're in such a small house and this is technically the laundry room. Um, this is what I kind of use as my YouTube space and my perfume storage and my makeup storage and everything. So I'm gonna go through and show you kind of where all my perfume is stored and then um, we'll get down on the floor and start going through perfume. So I will be right back with you. Okay guys, so this is my desk right here. Um, don't look at my skincare bin over there. It's like super embarrassing, but um, this is my desk. This is where I've got lotions and things that I keep because I get ready in here. Well, yeah, I get ready in here in the mornings. So all of the lotions that I'm currently like using and have in rotation are right here. Um, and then we've got some perfume. This stuff is already listed on Mercari for sale, so I'm going to leave that. These are some things that I just pulled down because I wanted to wear them, so um, yeah, I'll go through each one. I'm going to pull this stuff all down onto the ground, but I just want you to see kind of usually stuff that I am currently wanting to wear or that I just bought is stored right here. Um, I keep it down on my desk, so yeah, this is currently what my desk looks like. It's quite a mess. There's a printer right there that is completely covered. Um, yeah, I've just got stuff everywhere. This is usually my pile or my area where I keep things that I know I'm going to list on Mercari. Uh, but I have been holding off knowing that I'm going to do this video and I'm going to have much more to list on there. So uh, we will move from here over to the shelf that you guys always see. So this is just a built-in, um, that's the bottom shelf, the middle shelf, and the third shelf, and the top shelf. And then I've also got these doors down here, um, which you won't be able to see in here too well. Yeah, I guess it's okay. So yeah, this is all full of perfume all the way around, and then... This is, that's nail polish and stuff, and then some mailing supplies, but I do have perfume even down here. And then if we come up here, directly behind where I usually sit, there is more perfume. And this I usually uh, store over on the washing machine, um, but I moved it over here just to make it a little bit easier to do this video. Now my camera doesn't want to focus, but... So yeah, this is usually sitting on the washing machine because I really don't have anywhere else to put it. So that's what we're dealing with. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up on the floor. I'm going to pull everything down off my desk, which is where I'll start, and we will get going through some perfume. We're just going to get going and start going through every perfume I own, every full bottle of perfume I own, I should say. So the first one we're going to start with is uh, Hypnotic Poison. So this is the original formulation. This is the, I've been looking for this for absolutely ever. Um, I finally found it for a good price. You can find it, it's definitely out there, but they're really, really expensive. Um, you can see the, mine is about a third of the way full and I paid $35 for this. 
um, I think on Mercari. This is an absolute unicorn. I adore this fragrance. I love this one so much more than the current formulation. It's just such a gorgeous fragrance. So that is Dior Hypnotic Poison, the 2003 formulation. Next, we have Zara Mimosa Clouds. So you guys know I just picked this one up and I'm really enjoying this. I really like this fragrance. Um, it's definitely like a Baccarat Rouge 540 dupe, but I would say it's more like Ariana Grande Cloud than Baccarat Rouge 540. So um, I really like this one. It's I'm kind of over the whole 540 vibe. I think I've mentioned that. So, uh, But this one is a definite keeper. It's only 18 bucks, so it's like way cheaper than even the Ariana Grande. Uh, this one lasts a lot longer, but... Not Sorry, it doesn't last a lot longer than Ariana Grande, but it lasts really good on my skin. And this has a really beautiful nuttiness to it because it's got a pistachio note in it. So, yeah, I really love that one. Next one, this is Britney Spears Private Show. Uh, I just wore this to bed the other night, and right after I sprayed it on, my husband was like, Oh my gosh, you smell amazing. Um, yeah, he's... He's super easy to please when it comes to fragrance, especially if it's like a celebrity perfume. He loves celebrity fragrances on me, so he's a simple man. This has a beautiful, very like sweet, toned down coffee note in it. I just love this. It's such a good uh, celebrity fragrance. Oops. Okay. Next is, uh, this is Amouage Journey, and I love this fragrance. This is a beautiful, like, it's got a lot of jasmine in it. It's got some spices. I think it's got some cardamom and different things like that. This is a really beautiful, kind of sweet, powdery, spicy fragrance. Um, mine is a tester bottle, and yeah, this is really... Be, it's just a beautiful fragrance. Um, oh, so good. I love it. Lasts absolutely forever on the skin as well. And I just adore it. Okay, next one. This one I'm on the fence about. Um, I did just pick this one up. Let's see. There we go. Um, I did just pick this one up. This is Banana Republic Dark Cherry and Amber. And... I'm on the fence about this one. This, it smells delicious out of the bottle, but this ends up drying down to smelling pretty darn generic on my skin. I really, really like the way it smells, like I say, in the bottle, but we're just going to have to see. Um, I'm going to give it a couple more wear tests, and then this, this one's kind of on the chopping block, so we'll see. This is going to go on a maybe pile. <laughs> Okay, next. Ooh, this is a good one. We have got Nina, Nina Ricci Rose X Stays. And this is a gorgeous fragrance, you guys. Oh my gosh. I wore this the other day, and it's like I'm going to do a video where I compare this with the Lex Stays Rose Absolute. I think I need to tilt my camera up just a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, this is, um, it's definitely got that same DNA as the Rose Absolute, but this one is just, it's lighter and fresher, and it's gorgeous. It lasts absolutely forever on me. This is such a winner as far as rose fragrances, and as we go through these, you'll definitely see I'm going to declutter some of the rose fragrances that I bought because some are just so stand out to me and some just I don't want to hang on to because I've got so many and they just didn't make the cut but this one definitely made the cut it's so so gorgeous okay let's talk about another amazing rose this is Trusardi Delicate Rose and oh my gosh you guys this is so amazing and I got so many compliments on this when I wore it to work. It's just a beautiful, fresh, uh, 
like soapy, shampooy rose fragrance. It, uh, I love it. It gives me kind of the same vibes as the Key does as far as like just a beautiful, fresh shampoo kind of smell. But this is like a rose shampoo kind of smell. It is so, so good. So that is Trusardi Delicate Rose. Another new one to my collection. This is uh, Rihanna and this is Velvet Amber Oud. Let me see if my camera will get focused here. There we go. Velvet Amber Oud. This is so beautiful, you guys. Oh my gosh. Every time I smell this, it's uh, it's just so good. Um, this one is definitely very, very unique, though, and it's got this, like, mountain air note in it that I don't think would be everybody's cup of tea, so I definitely would recommend testing this one first, but I adore this. Oh my gosh, it's so, so good. It reminds me of, well, it reminds me of like what the Middle East would smell like, like some, oh my gosh, I just can't even explain it. It's just gorgeous. It's so unique and beautiful. And yeah, if, if you're into Middle Eastern smelling, uh, things, I would just highly recommend checking this one out. It's so good. Okay, the next one we have. This is Guerlain Lum Ideal Cologne. I adore this fragrance. This is a men's fragrance that I really like to wear. I get compliments every time I wear this. Uh, people really, really like this. Um, this has been discontinued. It's still pretty easy to come by. Um, this has got a really beautiful almond uh, like powdery almond note to it, but it's like a really fresh smelling fragrance. I just love it. There's something really cozy and comforting about it. And I love that when I want that cozy comforting vibe, but like in the dead of the summer, um, this one can totally hold up in heat. So I really love this. It's Lum Ideal Cologne from Guerlain. Okay, next, another one that's on the chopping block because I really can't smell this when it's on me. This is uh, Givenchy, very irresistible. And yeah, this is beautiful. This is like five different kinds of roses and anise, basically. Um, uh, it's such a beautiful, like, unique rose fragrance. But like I say, it's... Uh, I don't know if I'm anosmic to it or what, but it just, it's like I spray it on and then I can't smell anything at all. I bet it's one of those that other people can probably smell, but I can't smell it myself. So um, because of that, this one is probably going to go bye-bye. So that is very irresistible from Givenchy. That is the Eau de Toilette. So I think there's an Eau de Parfum and I probably need to try that one to see if maybe it lasts a little bit longer. Uh, another rose perfume. This is Dolce uh, from Dolce & Gabbana. This is the Rose Excelsa. This is, oh gosh, this is a beautiful kind of green rose fragrance. It's a fresh rose. It's really pretty. This one I am going to need to do a good wear test on. I still haven't really done a good wear test on it. That's why this one's sitting on my desk. Um, yeah, to see if this is one that I'm going to want to hang on to. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Dolce & Gabbana Rose Excelsa. Okay, this is one that did not make the cut. This is Mabusan. This is Rose Pour L. And this is a really beautiful fragrance. There's nothing wrong with this at all. It's stunning, actually. But I've got so many rose fragrances at this point. This is just one that um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. I just don't enjoy it as much as some of my other roses. And for that reason, um, I will definitely be passing it on. But um, it's a really gorgeous, light, very delicate, fruity rose fragrance. So that is Mabusan uh, Rose Pour L. Oops. 
Okay, next I've got a couple of Alchemy fragrances here. This is Alchemy Aqua. Uh, these were sent over to me from Alchemy, and they're a really small, small indie house. Um, I hate it because they don't get much exposure, and they're... Um, her main fragrance called 33 for women is really, really beautiful. You'll see that definitely coming up. These two, <clears throat> excuse me, these two are okay. Um, Aqua is okay. It's, it's definitely, this one is supposed to be the unisex fragrance. She's only got three fragrances and this is supposed to be the unisex fragrance of the three. Um, and it's definitely unisex. It's got kind of a men's cologne kind of smell. Um, yeah, it's not my favorite. I, my favorite is definitely the uh, women's one, which is called 33. So there's that one. But these were sent over to me, so they'll just be staying in my collection for sure. Um, this is Alchemy Gold, and this is the men's cologne version. And this is really, really beautiful. I like this better than the Aqua. Um, this is a really nice men's cologne. It's just super easy breezy. Uh, nothing groundbreaking. It's just, you know, this would just be an easy, like, no-brainer um, fragrance to reach for, like, on a day-to-day. -day. Okay. Next one I have. This is one that I just picked up. I just picked this up off of Mercari. Somebody had, like, a huge stock of this serendipitous from serendipity three you can find this on lucky scent and um they had to rebottle this because apparently they got sued by chanel for their bottle looking too much like a chanel bottle i guess um but anyways yeah somebody had a or and still does i think you can still find these on mercari but um they had a big like stock of this fragrance because of the issue with the bottle it had to be repackaged but this is a beautiful uh, this is a beautiful vanilla fragrance it's like a chocolate orange vanilla fragrance it's really really smooth and delicious um, it just doesn't last very long on the skin but I don't care I'm definitely keeping this in my collection because it's just so yummy so that is serendipitous this is another Mercari find, and this is one that I just picked up. I paid very little for this, like, I don't know, $5 maybe. Um, but I've been wanting to smell this for a long time. This is Michael Kors, Very Hollywood. Um, this is beautiful. This, uh, this is just a really beautiful, um, like, white floral fragrance, which is what Michael Kors does a lot of is white florals. But yeah, really, really pretty white floral fragrance. I really like this bottle too with these big, huge like holes. They're supposed to be rhinestones, I think, but they're really pretty. So yeah, I'm glad I got that for really, really inexpensive so I could test it. I still haven't worn that one yet because it, you know, it it's probably more suited for like springtime, but... Oh, this is another one that I just picked up off of. I found this on eBay for 14 or 15 bucks. It was so inexpensive. This is Chloe Love Story, and I have been wanting to try this fragrance for such a long time. Um, I adore Chloe fragrances. I just think that they are so classy and gorgeous. And this one is no exception. Um, this is... The lid is really hard to get off. Oh. This is just a really beautiful floral fragrance, and the thing about Chloe fragrances are I don't think that they're necessarily like safe blind buys. I would definitely try to sample Chloe fragrances before purchasing a full bottle because a lot of people think that these smell um, mature, and I would agree with that. These are definitely not like you know, anybody can wear any fragrance in any time of their life whenever they want, if they like it. Like, I'm not somebody who thinks that only certain age people should wear certain fragrances and all that ridiculousness. But these, you know, if you're like a younger lady, you might not want to smell like this, is all I'm saying, basically. But I love them. I think they're gorgeous. I love these bottles. And I just adore Chloe fragrances. I also found a 
partial bottle of Love Story Eau Sensuelle. So I can't wait for that one to get here too. Okay, next one. This is Burberry Brit Rhythm for her. And this is pretty. Um, uh, it's funny because something about this kind of reminds me of like the smell of diaper cream. Um, which I know sounds horrible, like who wants to smell like diaper cream, but there's something really comforting about it. I don't know. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of like when my daughter was a baby. Um, it remind it reminds me of like what a new mom might smell like. It's just, I love it. There's something really, really comforting about it. So that is Burberry Brit Rhythm. Okay, next we have uh, Juicy Couture La La Malibu, and this is pretty. Um, there's definitely nothing wrong with this fragrance, but I did buy this fragrance by mistake. I was thinking that this one had a marshmallow note in it, and it definitely does not. Um, this one is... This one is definitely just like a pretty generic smell but not in a bad way it's like really nice this is another one that my husband loves on me he thinks it smells so so good um this is one that I'm gonna hang on to and if I start reaching for it again like in the spring summer next year I will hang on to it but if I don't reach for it by maybe even by then I'll probably go ahead and declutter that one Okay, next one. This is another newer one to my collection. This is Catherine Malandrino, Romance de, Proven de, de Provence. And this is basically like Olivia Bell dupe. It's beautiful, though. Um, this one is... Uh, it's smoother and softer and a little bit less sweet. And I adore this. It's I wore this to bed the other night, and... It just smelled amazing. Like, the patchouli in here is beautiful. Like I say, it's not too sweet. It's not overpowering. It's just this fuzzy, cozy, yummy, like, La Via Belle dupe. I adore it. I like it better than La Via Belle. So, yeah, I will definitely be hanging on to that one. Okay, next we have Marc Jacobs' Decadence, Oh So Decadence. Um, this one, so I love how this smells, but this doesn't last on my skin at all. I'm going to hang on to it because I'm going to give it another couple tries to see if, you know, maybe it does better in cooler weather or, because I think it should be more of like a hotter weather fragrance, but I'm going to try it to see if maybe it'll do better in cooler weather for me. And if it does, I will hang on to it. If it does not, I will pass it on. Okay, next is another brand new one to my collection. And I'm going to take this out of the box so you can see this beautiful bottle. Um, this is called... Uh, let's see. Mm, this is Yoji Yamamoto. And I just randomly found this on Fragrance X. This is a really nice, this is definitely a hot weather fragrance. Um, oh, goodness, I'm going to have to spray this one. Yeah, this is beautiful. I think it's got like yuzu in it maybe. Um, it's just a beautiful, fresh fragrance. I have worn this. It did not last on my skin at all. Um, but... I'm going to wait until warmer weather and then give this another go to see if it lasts a little bit longer. But I love the way that one smells. It's just this beautiful, like, fresh, just nice fragrance. Okay, next one, another new one to my collection. This is Guess Seductive Noir. And I just actually wore this yesterday, like a full good wear test, wore to work yesterday for the first time. And this is beautiful. This is like an uber sweet Mon Guerlain. Um, it gets compared to Mon Guerlain a lot, and I get it. I definitely see the similarities. Um, to me, this smells more like Mon Guerlain uh, Floral 
than the original Mongerlan. Um, this is very sweet. It's got a lot of plum in it. Um, this one doesn't last on the skin for too terribly long. You'll get probably four hours out of it on the skin, but on clothing it lasts a whole lot longer. Um, I This is one that I could probably go in with 15 to 20 sprays of it and that it would probably perform really well with that amount. Uh, I was going to work and this one smells really strong when you first spray it out of the bottle, so I didn't want to overdo it. Um, so I didn't. I only went in with about five sprays and I could still smell it like all day, but it definitely kind of died down around the four hour mark for me. So I'm going to go in next time with a ton and uh, hope that I can get through like a full 10 hour day with it. But yeah, I love this one. Guess Seductive Noir. Another one, Zara Violet Blossom. This one I just picked up recently, and I really, really love this fragrance. It's so beautiful. It lasts really, really well on me, and I just adore this. Um, this one smells like, to me, it smells like a... Um, I don't know why my... There we go. It smells like a combination of Hypnotic Poison and Poison Girl. Um, I don't know where, and I don't know, I don't know if this is the same formulation that people are smelling that say they think it smells like uh, Mugler's Alien. I definitely do not get Alien vibes at all from this. Like, I don't get any kind of Jasmine or anything. This is all straight up, like, creamy, gourmand, like, hypnotic poison, poison girl. It's beautiful. I really love it. So that is Zara Violet Blossom. Okay, and the next one, this is one that I literally just got in the mail yesterday. One of you uh, told me that you've really been enjoying this fragrance, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to check it out. I found it on eBay for a really, really good price. This is a gorgeous bottle, too. Um, yeah, I found this on eBay for such a good price. Like, uh, I it was in the $20 range, for sure. Um, just gorgeous, though. So, this is kind of like a... Oh, gosh. This is... I don't even know what the notes are in this offhand because I haven't even looked up the notes in this one yet, but this is definitely a yummy, like, gourmand fragrance. It's, this one does not spell, it's, this one is really generic smelling when you first spray it on. There's definitely nothing groundbreaking about it. It's not anything special. Um, it's just another kind of nondescript gourmand fragrance until the dry down and something magical happens in the dry down of this one um what's going on with my lid oh there we go yeah there's something in the base of this that is amazing I'm I'll definitely look it up and I'll put this in a what I wore last week video and give you guys a much better like idea of what this is like and I'll give you notes and everything but the dry down of this is amazing. So that is Kenzo Low Kenzo Intense, which I probably didn't mention at the beginning. And then I was not going to include any like, you know, anything other than full bottles in this, but these are some fragrances that I just um, bought some samples of and I want to share them with you guys because these, all four of these are absolute freaking gems. Um, the first one is Guerlain Shalimar Cologne, and I, this is the one that I wanted to buy a sample of to begin with. Can you focus camera? And I ended up getting on accident this Guerlain Eau de Shalimar, and this is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. The Eau de Shalimar is gorgeous. There is a super prominent lime note in this that is so beautiful. But holy cow, this Shalimar cologne is amazing. This is like everything that I wanted the Souffle flankers to be. 
Um, the souffle flankers are touted as having like a ton of like lemon, orange blossom, um, bergamot. They're supposed to be like really citrusy, and a lot of people say that they're that they smell like lemon meringue pie or lemon cookies. No, that this is what smells when this dries down. Oh my gosh, it smells like. It smells like lemon cake or something. This has a very, very prominent vanilla note in the base. It still has that Shalimar smell to it that is so gorgeous. But, oh my gosh, it's, I think it's my favorite. This is by far my favorite Guerlain flanker that I have ever smelled. It is amazing. Um, I will be immediately buying a full bottle of this. So those are two gorgeous Shalimar flankers that I think are easy breezy enough for anybody to wear. And then this one, she sent along this um, sample. It's Guerlain Neroli Ultra Noir. And this is from that like high-end Guerlain line that is really, really expensive. Um, the same line that Spiritus du Blavigny is in. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so, so stunning. I tested this on my skin and I want a full bottle of this so bad. Um, I found a bottle on eBay that I'm probably going to pick up because it was, it's definitely like a lot cheaper than you can find it anywhere else, but I have to have this. It's gorgeous. It's so classy and beautiful smelling. And then, oh my gosh, she kills me with this. So I had never smelled this fragrance before. This is a discontinued fragrance called Love Chloe. And, oh my gosh, <laughs> when I sprayed this, I was like, why do they discontinue all of the best fragrances? This is the closest thing that I have ever smelled to... Uh, to my insolence, which is also a discontinued fragrance, and I love my insolence, but it's really hard to come across. And this is amazing. This smells like you'll have the same experience. It, there are definitely some major differences, but you will have the same experience with this as you do with my insolence. And they're just different enough that. I want a bottle of this so badly now, like I have to find it. So this moved way up to my, like the top of my unicorns list. Like I must have a full bottle of this. So this is Love Chloe. And I just wanted to share those samples with you because all four of them are so, so amazing. And I want full bottles of every single one of them. So anyways, guys, this video, just this little tiny portion, just the stuff just the stuff on my desk that was an almost 30 minute video and my battery is almost halfway dead so um or is halfway dead so i'm gonna go ahead and do uh the other side of my desk because that was actually only one side of my desk so i'll probably get through the other side of my desk and then i'll have to recharge and do all that but anyways this is the end of part one and we will pick up with part two. I'm thinking there are probably going to be possibly 10 parts to this video, which is insane. Um, if that is the case, then I will release a video every single day uh, just to get them up so you guys don't have to wait forever for them. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will be back very soon with part two.